Hello, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Wellness with Delaney podcast. Before we begin, if you are curious what the heck this little green drink is in my hand, I am actually currently doing a 21 day circadian rhythm reset. This is with the company called Wellwater. I talk about them all the time. They are actually the first biohacking company that I ever discovered and ever started working with and using their supplements with. So it is an amazing drink form supplement that is meant to replace your coffee and so many of your other supplements in your cabinet to really simplify your routine. And essentially, it comes with three delicious beverages. We have a rise in the morning, what I'm drinking right now, achieve for that midday, and then reflect for the evening. They deliver timely nutrients, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, electrolytes, clean caffeine, and more to optimize every component of your health from circadian rhythm. So that will be your energy and your sleep, that sleep-wake cycle, as well as your athletic function, your metabolism, your brain function, your stress reduction. I mean, this company truly does it all with their reset and routine. I do a 21 day reset and routine as often as I can, but when I'm not doing the full routine, I still like to supplement with their beverages here and there and replace my coffee with a rise in achieve throughout the day. This one specifically that I'm drinking has NAD plus, which is what I fondly call billionaire juice. It's what all the billionaires and millionaires out there swear by for brain function, mitochondrial support, and even anti-aging. So if you want to get on the movement and start taking well water today so that you can feel your best every single day, you can use Delaney at checkout for 20% off. I will make sure to have a link that you can use in the show notes if you are listening to this on Spotify or Apple and in the caption if you are watching this on YouTube. So let's get started into today's episode. It is a very, very hot topic in wellness, especially today in this society, and that is hormonal birth control. Now, if you're a guy and you're listening before you just tune out or skip to the next episode, I actually think it's really important for both men and women to understand birth control because at the end of the day, it takes two to make a baby. And I think it's really important for everyone to understand all the potential side effects and how Every form of birth control works, even if it's one that the men aren't going to be taking. It's really important just to be aware of what's going on with your lady. So I am going to be sharing my thoughts as a health and wellness coach on birth control. I have also been somebody who has used birth control multiple different forms for years at a time, and I have worked with so many women who have been on and off the pill and the IUD and the patch as well. So while I might not be a medical doctor, I am a woman who's experienced birth control. I am a health and wellness expert, and I've worked with so many women in their hormonal birth control journeys. That was a mouthful. Okay, let's get started. So to begin this episode, I'm going to share a little bit about my journey with hormonal birth control so you can get a little bit of reference for where I started, how I became so passionate about my stance on natural birth control. So I actually went on birth control for the first time when I was 18 years old. I was a freshman in college and I wasn't going on it to be an oral contraceptive. It was more for PMS. So I was struggling really badly with acne, with a little bit of just like moodiness, depression, stress, a lot of just the typical like health problems that people see when they're living in poor health. And I went to a doctor at my college. I was going to University of Washington at the time, and she, of course, prescribed me the pill. What I think is really funny about this actually looking back is that a lot of my symptoms were being caused by my poor lifestyle and habits. I had acne because I had moved to college and I was drinking and partying, not sleeping, eating worse, and not washing my pillows frequently enough, most likely. And I was also having all these other symptoms, these mood swings, depression, sadness, all of this, because I was going through a very hard breakup at the time with somebody that I dated for a very long time. And so I wasn't actually depressed. I was sad. And there is a difference. Depression is a mental illness, a disorder, if you will. Sadness is a very appropriate reaction to circumstances in your life. And sometimes we are going to be sad. That doesn't mean we're depressed and that doesn't mean that we need to put a pill on it. So that's kind of where I was at starting birth control. And it's funny because I went on birth control for acne mainly and my acne actually got worse. I got this cystic acne all over my face, especially the lower half of my face, which is how you can tell if it's hormonal, if it's around your chin, your cheeks and your jaw. 
Another really fun side effect that happened was I gained like 20 pounds. And no matter what I did, no matter how hard I worked out, I was in the gym every day. I was also teaching group fitness at the time and I, I couldn't lose the weight. Yeah, I was drinking, which didn't help. And I was eating poorly, which didn't help. But even when I went on restrictive diets, when I tried to cut things out, I couldn't lose the weight. It was just this hormonal, like my boobs were huge. My belly was huge. Everything felt huge and bloated and swollen. And I really just didn't like how I looked and I didn't like how I felt in my skin. And I think the scariest thing that actually happened was I, at a time was, I got so depressed and so mentally unhinged that I actually remember laying in bed one day and like having like suicidal ideations. And I knew I wasn't somebody that would actually take my own life, but it scared me so badly. And it felt like these thoughts were not from me. I had never once even imagined considering something like that. And I remember laying there and just feeling so emotionally helpless. And I thought just like, what's the point of living? And that is sadly something that's pretty common with women who go on the pill. And I obviously want to approach that topic with sensitivity because there are a lot of reasons people might be suicidal and all of them are very, very sad and hard. Um, I just want to share, this is my story. This is what happened to me. And I know that birth control was a major factor in me just becoming severely depressed. My decision-making was also really, really poor at the time. I was really impulsive. I was really irrational. I was making decisions that I knew weren't right for me in the moment. And sometimes it felt like it wasn't even me making decisions for me. That's not an excuse for poor behavior. But as I've researched more and more, this is actually pretty common when it comes to birth control because our emotional regulation and our mental regulation and our decision making are all impacted by synthetic hormones that we're putting in our bodies because our hormones are such major components of who we are on so many different levels. So the pill was not good for me. At the time, I even tried switching different pills because I thought maybe it was just the specific one I was trying. I tried estrogen. I tried progesterone. I tried combination. And certain ones got rid of my acne. But at the end of the day, the moodiness, the mental health, the weight gain, none of those went away. So I just, I didn't feel good in my own skin. I didn't like who I was and I wasn't thriving. I wasn't sparkling and shining and radiating the energy that I wanted to radiate in life, which is healthy, happy, inspirational, like all these things I wanted to be. I wasn't being those things and I didn't feel like I could. I know so many women who are on the pill or the IUD or the patch or other forms of hormonal birth control feel the same way. They feel like their life is happening to them. Like they're, they have no control in their life. Like they are out of control. They have anger issues, emotional issues, all these things. And it's, it's really sad because oftentimes women actually don't know where it's coming from. Um, and I'm here to kind of educate you on that component. So um, back to the story, I ended up getting off the pill in 2018 and immediately lost like so much weight. I lost, I think, a total of 30 pounds. I was actually leaner than before going on the pill after getting off of it. And it was really easy. Like I did have to eat healthy and work out, but I was already doing those things before. And I lost the weight beautifully. At the time, I wasn't in the sorority setting that I had been in before. So I wasn't going out. I wasn't drinking. I did remove myself from that scenario, even while I was on the pill. But I suddenly was able to lose weight. I was able to put on muscle. My acne went away, like all these things. And the best thing was I felt like myself again. I got my personality back and I felt like my decision making was more on point. My brain was more clear. Like I was the one making my decisions. It wasn't this like chemical imbalance making decisions for me and making me more impulsive and irrational. And it was really just such a relief. It was such a beautiful moment. Um, and then fast forward a few years later before my wedding. So I guess this was actually several years later before my wedding, I decided that I would get back on birth control and use the IUD. You know, distance does make the heart grow fonder. And I thought that the IUD would be a better form of birth control because I a had forgotten some of those insane side effects that I had from birth control. But B, I was listening to all these podcasts and these doctors who were saying that if the pill makes you gain weight, the IUD is a great option for you because it won't make you gain weight in most cases. And I had friends getting on the IUD, all this stuff. And I really just wanted to enjoy marriage without worrying about getting pregnant right away, without always having to use like contraceptives. And so I was like, yeah, like, let's give this a try. 
at first it wasn't fine. Like at first there were no symptoms other than the first week when I got it, I was extremely weepy and emotional and sensitive and everything set me off, which was definitely like pretty tricky. And then of course, you know, when I first got it, there was a lot of like bleeding and cramping and all the typical things that are kind of morbid, but a part of getting an IUD and something that most women will go through. And then when we fast forward a year from when I got my IUD, suddenly I just got the worst hormonal acne of my entire life. Like it was worse than I was on the pill. It was worse than anything I'd ever experienced. And because it came up a year after getting my IUD, I didn't actually connect it to my IUD. I thought it had to be something else. At the time, I was eating a healthy diet. I was vegan, but like I wasn't eating a ton of processed food. I wasn't eating junk food, dyes. I was trying to eliminate seed oils. I wasn't drinking frequently. I was doing what I thought was all the right things, but my skin was just, I mean, horrible. And it was to the point where I cried almost every day and I was a newlywed So I was just so mortified and embarrassed. And I remember apologizing to my husband in tears because in my head, I wanted him to marry this beautiful, sexy, vibrant woman. And we get married and suddenly I turned into this just like hormonal acne mess. And I felt like I was so ugly and he was so sweet through the whole process, but I felt so ugly and I felt like I wasn't being a beautiful wife that I wanted to be. And I remember being mortified because you can cover up color, but you can't cover up texture. And so even with makeup, like the acne was there and it was obvious and it was painful and embarrassing. I could always feel it on my skin because it was cystic. And so I always knew it was there. I never forgot that it was there. And I tried so many things to solve it. I tried getting facials every four weeks. I tried high-end, top-of-the-line, esthetician, medical-grade, all of it, skincare, like spent probably thousands of dollars on products. I even tried hyperbaric oxygen chambers. I did, I mean, everything. I did seed cycling. I did supplements, herbs, everything under the sun. And everything did have a marginal impact on my acne because a lot of times if you have like a root deep inside of you cause of acne, if you're putting topicals on it that are meant to treat acne, they will treat the acne that is currently on your face. But the problem is if you have a hormonal imbalance or something going on inside your body, the source of the acne is still there. So new breakouts are going to come up. So even though you're treating whatever's on your skin, it will only be a short-term solution because you're still not getting rid of the cause of your acne at an internal level, whether that's hormone imbalance, a gut issue, a fungal issue, and the list goes on. So I was trying all these things and the acne kept coming back with a vengeance. It was just a mortifying, mortifying time of my life. And one day after experiencing this for probably a year. I was like, let's just try to take out the IUD. Let's just see what happens. And I was kind of nervous because I didn't want to get pregnant, but I also felt this like inclination, this intuition that was like, this might actually be the cause. At the time, I also felt like I just wanted to up-level my health in general. I wanted to become familiar with my hormones. I wanted to be in tune with my body, stop relying on something synthetic, but to become really my most natural self. And I also wanted to get in better shape. And I felt like I had cortisol belly. Like I, I was fit and muscular and lean and I weighed the same amount that I weigh now, but I had this like cortisol belly. I didn't have like the figure that I wanted. And that was just my personal choice. So I made an appointment. I got my IUD out. And when I left that appointment, I can't even explain. It felt like a weight had been lifted off of my body. I swear within the first day, I got my personality back. Granted, I was taking a lot of supplements. I was taking dim supplements to balance my progesterone. I was at the time seed cycling. I was doing all these things to kind of support my hormones because there is often a withdrawal period when you get off of hormonal birth control. So I decided to really be on it. And my personality was back within a day. I realized I actually wasn't this like psycho person that was super reactive. I became so much more responsive, especially towards my husband. I stopped being reactive. I stopped feeling the urge to yell. I stopped having like a level of emotional immaturity and impulsiveness that came with the chemical imbalances and synthetic chemicals pulsing through my body. And within about three weeks, I stopped getting acne. Obviously, I still was dealing with what was already on my face and I was dealing with acne scars mainly, but I stopped getting this hormonal insane acne literally within three weeks of removing my IUD after spending thousands upon thousands of dollars on every holistic and conventional treatment, facials, I mean, the pure oxygen chambers, everything, 
all it took was removing my IUD and getting that ish out of my body. My acne went away. And the best thing is my cortisol belly started to go away. That's like a deeper journey because I also was leaving veganism around the same time slowly. And there were so many other contributors to my cortisol belly leaving and getting into biohacking, all of that. But getting off of hormonal birth control was a big one because hormonal birth control does dysregulate a lot of our hormones, cortisol being one of them. And it's really common to have excess abdominal weight that's really hard to lose when you are on hormonal birth control. So that's my story. This is my background, what happened to me, and kind of what launched me into getting very passionate about women's health and hormones, because I knew that if it was happening to me as a health professional who was literally working with people on chronic disease management at a very high level, if I'm this health expert going through severe acne and hormonal imbalances and all these things, it's got to be happening to everyone else because I'm supposed to be like the person that people look to. This is what I was thinking. I'm like, okay, well, if I'm experiencing all these things, I'm willing to bet everyone else is too. I, I'm not the only one. And so I started researching and getting obsessive and learning about women's health and hormones really just grilling my naturopath. I would get on these appointments with my naturopath and I would spend half the time just asking her general questions that I was curious about with women's hormones. Like half of the appointment wouldn't even be about me. I just was so hungry for knowledge. And I started to realize that a lot of doctors, a lot of conventional doctors are really, in my opinion, gaslighting women into thinking that birth control is something to cure or treat their hormonal issues rather than a Band-Aid solution, which is what it is. Doctors use it as a treatment for PMS, PCOS, endometriosis, acne, everything else. And birth control doesn't treat any of those things. It's a band-aid solution. And often when you get off of birth control, those things are going to come back with a vengeance. They're going to come back worse because you're not healing your hormones. In fact, you're making them less healthy and less stable. And if you're like me and you were gaslit by a doctor, then you would also probably know what it's like to go on birth control and have all these side effects and then ask your, your practitioner about it, your provider about it, and them to be like, no, birth control is not causing it. There's something else. I remember going to my doctor when I was on the pill and being like, hey, this birth control is giving me acne. It's causing me to gain weight. And my doctor looked me in the eye and told me that I was incorrect, that there was zero chance whatsoever that birth control could cause weight gain or acne or any side effects. And if I was having any side effects, it was 100% because of other lifestyle changes. Now, I am not saying that people shouldn't be allowed to go on birth control. I'm all about informed consent and medical freedom. I am saying that it is wrong for doctors or anyone to not provide informed consent and to not allow people to understand potential side effects of any medical intervention. So if a doctor is telling you that something you're putting in your body that chemically alters your body in any way has zero side effects, cannot be the cause of any of your health disparities coming up, then you need a new doctor because truly they do not have your best interests at heart. They're thinking about their money or they're misinformed and they're not somebody that should be practicing on your body. So I I experienced this for myself. I was told that there was zero chance in heaven or hell that birth control was causing any of my issues. And it was really discouraging. I was like, there's something I'm doing wrong, but I feel like, I feel like this is something that's causing it, but okay. Like she, she's the doctor. She's the expert, not me. And obviously looking back, I knew I was right and my intuition was correct, but I didn't know at the time that my doctor could be wrong. I thought my doctor was like medical God. You know what I mean? And doctors are not. They're people too. And oftentimes they're not even trained on some of the side effects and some of the root cause, more natural things that happened in our bodies. They're trained to prescribe a pill. Not to say all doctors. There are some amazing, amazing doctors out there. But in my experience, this is what's happened to me with my women's health doctor. And I've talked to many women who've had very similar experiences. So why is birth control causing these things? Let's get into the science of it. So birth control is actually something that, like I said, can make your symptoms worse in the long run, especially when you get off of it. But oral contraceptives specifically, so that would be the pill, is actually a group one carcinogen. That is from the World Health Organization and International Agency for Research on Cancer. So this is not like some woo-woo, natural whatever, which I know I can kind of be categorized into that. This is like conventional systems that are classifying this as a group one carcinogen. This means that there is enough evidence to conclude that 
birth control causes cancer in humans. So it means while they can't definitively tell you, there's enough evidence that they can conclude, yes, birth control does cause cancer. So it actually raises the risk of both breast cancer and cervical cancer, especially over prolonged use. So a lot of people I know go on birth control for like 10, 15 years. It is not meant to be a long-term solution. And the longer you go on it, the higher these risks are especially when it comes to fertility. So being on birth control, unlike what a lot of doctors will tell you, can massively impact long-term fertility even when you get off of it because you're messing with your hormones. You're changing your body in the chemical way it interacts. Our bodies are smarter than us. Our bodies are brilliant and they do trillions of amazing things every day for us at a cellular level. Our bodies know what to do. So when we're shoving them with synthetic chemicals that override the natural hormones that we should be working with to heal and support, then it can have long-term ramifications. I think it's really funny how there's this misconception that whatever you put in your body will treat that thing, but it doesn't do anything to your body as a whole. Anytime you put something in your body, I think it's really important to understand that any medicine, any supplement, any treatment will not just affect the thing that you're looking to treat. It'll affect your body as a whole because every system is very, very connected at a cellular level. Our bodies communicate inside of us. I mean, that's why they consider the gut the second brain. We have so much communication between organs, between functionalities in our bodies. So yes, if you take birth control, there are going to be other side effects and they might actually last even beyond getting off of birth control. Something else that I learned through research is that birth control actually increases the risk of psychopathia and it can increase depression and it can increase the risk of suicide or suicidal ideation. And like I said, this is a very, very touchy subject, but birth control really can alter the way we make decisions. It can alter the way we think, it can alter our reactivity, and it can even lead to intense mood swings, depression, suicidal ideation. Um, this is through a lot of studies. This is through a lot of research. And I also know that I have experienced this myself. And I know how scary it is to feel like I was this happy person. Like, why, why do I feel so bad? Why am I having panic attacks? And like, it's, it's gaslighting because at the end of the day, it's hard to realize that this little pill you're taking just to regulate your PMS or whatever is actually affecting your body at a mental level. I remember being on birth control and having literal anxiety panic attacks to the point of hyperventilating. Anytime something would come up that was a major stressor for me, instead of being able to sit and evaluate it and look at it from all angles, I would just have a panic attack and shut down. And it affected the way I lived in the day to day. And it was horrible. But once again, I didn't know it was from birth control until I knew. Another thing that birth control does to us is it keeps us from proper ovulation. Now, I know that cycle syncing is becoming increasingly popular. And for that, I am so grateful because I think it's important for women to understand their cycles, but it's also really important for men to understand women's cycles. The reason I think everybody should understand the female menstrual cycle is that a, it's really important for understanding your chances of pregnancy at different points in the month and for men understanding the chances of your woman getting pregnant at different points of the month because action always has a consequence, whether it's negative or positive. Obviously, life is beautiful, but you might not be ready. And so it's important to understand what's happening in your body and be able to make decisions based on your cycle. But another thing is women's needs, their emotions, their physiology literally change throughout their menstrual cycle. So understanding as a man how to properly approach your woman, how to care for her, how to nurture her through different points of her cycle is really, really awesome because you can then be a better partner for her. And then as a woman, being able to communicate your needs, being able to articulate why you're feeling the way you're feeling and being able to capitalize on the different phases of your cycle energetically with your diet, with your workouts, it is a game changer. It really does increase your health. It can help decrease your cortisol. It can help balance your body and it can help you just live a better, more aligned, more in tune life. So I think it's really important to understand our cycles. And with birth control, it can shut off ovulation. So ovulation is often people's favorite phase of the menstrual cycle for men and for women. Men love the ovulation cycle because this is when women are like the horniest. This is when they're wanting to have sex all the time. And this is because the woman's body is ovulating. This is when it's the most fertile. And biologically, our bodies want to get pregnant. Whether or not mentally we want to get pregnant, our bodies are literally designed to get pregnant. So 
men love the ovulation phase. This is also often when we're the most attractive and glowy. Our boobs look good. Our hair sits well. There's just this level of like effervescentness that women embody truly when they're ovulating, we become physically more attractive. And for women understanding like ovulation is important also because it's important for your mood, for your bone density, for your athletic performance. This is the time of the month when you can PR in the gym. You're going to have amazing energy. You're going to have this glow. This is when you want to be able to schedule things where you're social, where you're feeling yourself and you're going to enjoy those components of life just a little bit more during ovulation. So there is this like inside out glow that happens during ovulation. It's a beautiful time. It's so important for your health as well, for that bone density, for your athletic function. And it's something that we don't want to miss out on women. It's literally like the best part of the cycle and birth control can keep us from ovulating. It basically keeps us in the luteal phase, which if you know much about your cycle, the luteal phase is just not that fun. For men, it's not that fun because often their women are a little bit annoyed at them. Um, There's always this running joke with your luteal phase that you know you're in your luteal phase when the sound of your man's breathing annoys you. And it's funny because it's kind of true. We become more irritable, more introverted, a little bit more sluggish, groggy, bloated. This is when you might see a little bit of like hormonal acne popping up. It's just not the funnest time. It's good in its own way. If you can schedule your life to be a little bit more slow, a little bit more gentle. And if as a man, you can approach your woman with a little bit more gentleness and not take them getting annoyed at you. So personally, the luteal phase can be a good time, but it's, it's not ovulation. It's not this glowy, effervescent, beautiful, radiant season that we all love so much. And then for women, the luteal phase is, it's going to be when you're more bloated. It's going to be when you feel more sluggish, not feeling as good, and you're going to be more irritable. This is just when you're not going to be wanting to have sex all the time. You just want to kind of chill and be a little bit more like just calm and introverted and not seeing a ton of people. It's, there's nothing wrong with the luteal phase. It's an important phase, actually. It's really important for progesterone levels. It's really important for development of a fetus when you do get pregnant. But at the same time, it's not something we want to stay in. It's not a good place to stay in mentally because without the luteal or without the ovulation phase, we're missing out on a lot of goodness. You know, that there's the menstrual phase, the follicular ovulation and luteal, and every single part is very critical and important to our health. But if we have one and not the other, it's it's just not good at a mental outside level but also at an internal deep root cause health level. We want to have all those phases for our hormone balance and for all the functions that happen in our bodies. So if you're staying in the luteal phase, it's just not where you're going to thrive. And then a lot of other experts kind of say that birth control does kind of mimic menopausal symptoms. It kind of makes your body think that you are in menopause. So it's not fun. It's not doing fun things to your body. It's not doing fun things to your personality. It's not going to give you that effervescent, beautiful glow that women have when they're in that ovulation phase and even in their follicular phase when they're just little energizer bunnies. These are such fun, beautiful times of the month and we miss out on them on birth control. So I think that if you want to have that effervescent glow, it might be time to consider if birth control really is the best way forward for you. So like I said, I am not telling you to not be on the pill. I'm not telling you what to make as a decision for your mental, physical, medical health. I'm trying to lay out all the facts for you that often our doctors don't give us. And I want you to be able to make informed consent for your body, that thing that works the best for you. At the end of the day, do I think birth control is healthy? No, I don't personally, but it's your choice. I don't think birth control is really a moral issue. I just want you to have the facts because I care about you and I want you to be your healthiest, healthiest self. And it's interesting because there are a lot of people who see it the way I do. Numbers like never before are getting off the pill. Women and teenagers are getting off the pill like it's never been seen before because they're realizing that it's keeping them from being their happiest, healthiest, most vibrant selves. So let's talk about what I do instead, some ideas for you to do instead. So I currently am using natural cycles. I'm not sponsored by them. I just really like them. I've been using it for years, actually, and it's worked for me so far. It is a natural birth control method that actually statistically is as effective or more effective than birth control if you do it perfectly. So I do want to caveat. You have to do it perfectly for it to be as effective or more effective than the pill. 
but if you do it correctly, it's amazing. So essentially what I do is every morning I take my temperature under my tongue. I do this before getting up. So it's important before you get up, before you do anything physical to take your temperature because your temperature is going to spike the second you move your body. So my alarm goes off. I immediately reach for my thermometer, put it under my tongue, take my temp, and then I log it into the Natural Cycles app. And then from there, I can track things like if I've had sex, if it was protected sex, if there was withdrawal, if I'm hungover, if I have bleeding, spotting, period, like all these things. If I slept poorly, you log all these little things and then it actually tracks your cycle for you. And what I love is this: the algorithm basically gets to know your cycle. So when you first start using it, it'll tell you to use protection most days because it's learning your body. But then once you've used it for several months or even years, your algorithm gets figured out and you realize that most of the days of the month, you're actually clear to have sex and you really won't get pregnant because your body's not fertile. It does tell you which days to use protection or to abstain. So for me personally, I like to just use protection during the days that it tells me to, which will happen a little bit before ovulation and a little bit after ovulation, just to be safe, to stay out of that like window of fertility. The rest of the month, I just do what I want to do because I've learned that the body actually really can't get pregnant every single day. And this is something my doctors really helped me figure out that there are only really certain days before ovulation and up to 36 or 48 hours after ovulation that you can get pregnant um, because sperm doesn't live forever and we're only fertile for part of the month. So that has been a really amazing thing for me. No symptoms, no side effects, and it is as effective as birth control with correct use, with 100% correct use. And I also cycle sync. So for me, that can be my workouts, my lifestyle, my work regimen. For workouts specifically, just a quick rundown of what cycle syncing looks like if you're interested in getting into it. Cycle syncing is one of my favorite free biohacks. It is truly a biohack because you're hacking your biology to be intuitive, to come back to nature, to be able to optimize your body based on what it needs in the moment, but it's completely free. It will cost you nothing. So menstrual phase is the first five-ish days of your period. So it starts day one of your period and typically lasts five days. This is when all your hormone levels are dropped. You are going to be more fatigued, more tired, more introverted. So this is when I actually don't go to the gym and I don't lift. I might stretch, do mat Pilates, really low impact work, slow walks. I still like to walk every single day regardless, but it's going to be more of the restorative exercise. We want to work with the body, not against it. So if you're lifting on your period, this can actually increase cortisol and cause weight gain. And I think that surprises a lot of women because it can be mentally really hard to get out of a workout regimen for five days. They feel like they're going to fall back. But actually, a lot of women discover when they start cycle syncing their workouts, they lose weight because their cortisol is down, their hormones are more balanced, and they're working with their biology instead of against it. And then day six is a great day because this is when we start the follicular phase. This will be the next week or so. And the follicular phase is when you are going to be able to incorporate more cardio, more weights, more energy. You're going to feel that energy spike. You're like a little cardio bunny. This is also when you're going to be more social, more interactive, and just like your estrogen's up. So you just have more motivation. That's where that estrogen is spiking. It's rising. And so you're going to feel that energy really rise. So I love to do like HIIT workouts, conditioning. I love to lift. I do my mega forward loggery. I'll still do some Pilates in there. I don't like to do high impact every day, but you can start to incorporate that high impact back into your regimen. The next week, looking around ovulation, this is when you can begin to PR. So this is when at the peak of ovulation, you are going to be almost as strong as a man. So if you're trying to hit heavyweight PRs or athletic PRs in any way, this is the time to do it. It's such a great time because you're literally, your bone, bones are getting more dense, your muscles are stronger, your energy's up, your libido is up, you're glowing, it's sexy, it's fun. This is when you really put on the weight and really push your body. And then we get into that luteal phase and this is before your period, so this is the last stage of your cycle. And you can still lift and work out. I just tend to taper it. So at the beginning of my luteal phase, I might still be lifting more similarly to a, like a follicular phase workout, but then I begin to taper it throughout the week until I get to my period when I'm doing really slow, low impact, lightweight. And you will naturally, as you start to do this, begin to notice and feel the strength and the energy levels in your body. And you can begin to be more intuitive. And this is what I love. When you start honoring your body and really respecting the different levels and stages of your menstrual cycle, it begins to make sense because your body is always communicating with you. We often just tune out of that communication. When you tune back into what your body's asking for and what it's needing to be optimal, suddenly 
we can hear our bodies, we can feel what it needs, and we can act accordingly. And it's just so great for optimizing. I've actually lost a lot of body fat, a lot of bloat, a lot of weight just by cycle syncing. So this is very like counterintuitive in some ways if you're living a traditional Western life. People think you need to grind every single day. And if you're not, you're going to gain weight, you're going to be fat, whatever. But actually, by tuning into your body and tuning out of what everyone tells you you need to do, especially training like a man. I have so many men that I'm friends with in the fitness world who are like, you mean you don't lift for five days in a row? And I'm like, yeah, I'm a woman. My body's different. Women cycle on a 28-day basis. Men cycle on a 24-hour basis. So our needs are very different. So if you're a woman and you're lifting like a man on that same cycle, it might be time to start tuning into your beautiful, amazing, heavenly, womanly cycle that is so part of who you are at a DNA level and to embrace that and to begin to cycle sync and honor your body at every stage instead of fighting against your biology. Because when you fight against your biology, you're always going to lose. Your biology is always going to win. When you fight with your biology and optimize it and take care of it and nurture it, you become the most strong, healthy, vibrant, amazing version of yourself. Like it is a game changer. And that's what biohacking is all about. I've realized that biohacking is not about fighting my nature. It's not about becoming like the opposite of who I am. It's about understanding my nature and optimizing it, understanding what's happening inside my cells and supporting it and telling my body, thank you for all the amazing things that you do for me. I'm going to support you by doing these things for you. It's a total paradigm shift from this like grind culture. I need to be better. I need to be stronger. I need to work harder. And it's actually this way of giving back to your body in a way that's intuitive to your body, in a way that it actually needs because it's working with your biology instead of against it. So I really think it's important for women to understand their cycles so that they can naturally kind of biohack and support their cycles throughout every stage. Another thing I know people talk about a lot is seed cycling. I used to seed cycle, but my my tune has changed a little bit on it. I don't do it anymore. There are pros and cons. So I will kind of show you the pros. I'll show you the cons. And then you can decide for yourself what you want to do. So pros of seed cycling is you can increase your estrogen and increase your progesterone different times of the month when you need to. So seed cycling is you basically freshly grind sesame seeds and sunflower seeds half the month and then pumpkin seeds and flax seeds half the month. And you are taking them at different times of your cycle. I believe it's the sesame seeds and the sunflower the first half, and then the pumpkin flax mix the second half, I believe. And you're cycling those and just taking them in some water. And it's basically going to support your hormones and raise your estrogen when you want to raise, raise your progesterone when you want to raise and support you. I did do it for a time and I liked it marginally. The reason why I don't do it anymore is I've actually moved away from eating a lot of seeds naturally, as I've gone away from vegan diet, I've kind of learned that a lot of these foods have phytic acid, oxalic acid, lectins, all these things I've talked about in previous episodes that are basically compounds in our food that fight against our health. So seeds are a big cause of stripping minerals from our bodies. They can really kind of decrease our energy, decrease our functionality if it's stripping our minerals. Something else about them is they're very high in omega-6. I have actually been trying to eat less omega-6 and more omega-3 and C15 because omega-6 is very susceptible to oxidation. There's a lot of places on those fat molecules for oxygen to attach to, and to cause oxidation is going to lead to early signs of aging, inflammation, all these things that we don't want, versus omega-3s, like those saturated fats are a lot more protected from oxidation. And same with C15, it's a really powerful antioxidant, so it's going to protect your body from oxidation versus increasing it. So that's why I don't personally seed cycle, Am I against it? No. I think there are pros and cons, but I think you just kind of have to see what works for you. So if it's something you're curious about and you're looking to get off birth control and you want to kind of just balance those hormones for a season, that is a great thing that you could try. I just don't personally do it. So I think there are pros and cons. And sometimes you have to like understand that it's not so cut and dry. It's not one size fits all, but something is going to work for one person and not another person just depending on their goals. And that is totally okay. So seed cycling is an option. You can take it or leave it. I leave it, but I don't think it's necessarily inherently bad or wrong. Those are some options for you when it comes to natural birth control. Obviously, I think this is something that you do have to consider and think about and mull over and be curious and ready to do. I think when it comes to any health change, when you force it on yourself, when you're not ready or curious, it's going to lead to some issues down the road. 
But if you're getting curious about your hormone health and you're starting to feel like maybe birth control isn't the best option for you, or you're a guy listening to this and you feel like some of the things that I experienced ring a bell and resonate with you when it comes to stuff you've seen for your woman, and you want her to be her healthiest, happiest, most vibrant self, maybe it's time to start considering alternative options, considering if maybe birth control is one of the causes of some of the things that you're experiencing that are not optimal. And if that's the case, I am here for you. You can always reach out to me. And I love talking to women about their hormones and talking about balancing health. Just send me a DM, comment on if you're watching this on YouTube, reach out to me, email me, and I'm always happy to get in contact with you and just give you some more guidance and some deeper ideas and just places to start. But I personally am so glad I got off of birth control. It has changed my life. And it has been one of the things that's really propelled me into a level of health and optimization that I never knew was possible. I never saw myself as being the person literally on a podcast talking about health because I've gotten to the place of just feeling so optimal and so healthy. And I never thought I would become a licensed professional, that I would have a degree in health and have a background and worked with chronic disease. This was not me. I was never that person. But through curiosity, through years of research, through discovering that I actually love living at ease with my body instead of fighting against it. I have just developed this passion and this understanding and love for health and wellness. And I want everyone to experience that as well. So that's why I'm here. I just want you to be able to knock down the barriers between you and your optimal, most vibrant, amazing, healthy life. And I love you so much. And I just want you to be able to be truly without disease, without illness and without discomfort in your life. You guys, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I hope you learned something and I look forward to chatting again soon. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.